In this video, we'll build the SIG Shoestring Kit, one of the two planes eligible for the LA-15 scale race. The kit is very similar to the SIG Buster, but the shoestring wing needs to have the airfoil carved and sanded. As with the Buster, I have to fix the landing gear, engine mount, tank mount, and fuel shutoff device. Since those topics were already covered in the Buster video, I'll only detail the differences in this video. It didn't take long to get the engine mount modified, but then I noticed something. Ah! The kit shipped with a fuselage warped beyond repair. It makes my head explode. Now that I own a scroll saw, the fastest way to fix the fuselage was to cut a new one. I had two balsa boards to choose from. I chose the heavier and stronger board. I traced the fuselage from the plans onto a card and then onto the board and started cutting. The advantage here is that I could cut the engine mount exactly as I need it without further modification. For a one and a quarter ounce penalty, I got a much stronger fuselage. I replaced the light ply doublers with stronger birch plywood. After attaching the doublers, I drilled them for my new landing gear design. The gear is in two pieces and can be mounted in a forward or rearward position without changing the height of the nose over the ground. If this works out, I'll probably retrofit the design to my buster. I decided to try a new bender for hard brass tube. It comes with pretty good instructions. The trick is to pull as hard as you can when wrapping the tubing around the bender. I made a bend much tighter than 90 degrees. You end up with a small dent where the bender's pin was located and a bit of concave collapse on the inside of the bend. As this is only a vent line, I'm okay with that. A big advantage to this bender over the Dubra one is that there are no handles in the way when doing compound bends. I designed this tank caddy with screws I could tighten without having to remove the tank. I added a rubber grommet to the clip that holds the fuel fill line so I won't have brass vibrating against brass. I retrofitted this design to my buster too. I reinforced the fuselage with 132nd inch plywood just like the buster. I traced the wing from the plans and cut it out. I also reinforced the leading edge with basswood. Chris was kind enough to send me this photo on sanding airfoils. The high point of this airfoil is at 30% of cord. Think of the tapered wing as being made of many ribs with this 30% feature. Mark the wing along its span where this high point is to be located. In the case of the shoestring, it makes a span-wise straight line. The masking tape protects the wing's high point so I don't accidentally sand too much. When sanding the trailing edge, I use a scrap brass tube the desired thickness to prevent over sanding there. The shoestring wasn't quite as nose heavy as the buster because of the shoestring's upgraded fuselage, so I used less plywood in the shoestring elevator. The plans don't show what to do here, either build up the fuselage or build down the rudder. The usual places are reinforced with fiberglass. I use spackling to fill large dents and imperfections before applying any dope. It's heavier than high-tech fill products, but very cheap. The balsa in the wing is a little soft, so I covered it with medium silk span to improve its strength. I used light silk span everywhere else. At this point in the finishing process, I cover my bench with a foam pad so as not to dent the plane. I sprayed the plane with Top Flight's Luster Coat, primer, yellow, and aluminum. I sprayed according to the instructions, which gives you the rough, so-called orange peel finish. That's because each light coat you spray is allowed to dry a bit before the next coat, creating the textured finish. Thanks to Jack for explaining that I need to apply wet coats to achieve a light plastic finish, spraying on much more paint with each coat than I'm used to doing. This is time consuming and hard to do because the surface must be horizontal during spraying to prevent the paint from running. With this technique, I was able to sand and improve the top surface of the wings. For the wing bottoms, I chose to sand with 2000 grit wet. It improved the smoothness without taking off too much shine. I carefully finished the leadouts to match the buster so that I can use the same control lines on both planes without changing the diameter of the circle. I discovered the peel and stick decals provided in the kit are not fuel proof, so I sprayed them with crystal clear, both on the shoestring and the buster. I experimented with removable Avery labels. 
Since I have no graphic art talent, I print the image I want on the labels and stick them to the trim sheets used for final decoration. The labels really help with cutting out the trim sheets. Positioning the trim is easy with a bit of soapy water. Once the water is dried, the Avery labels are removed. The nominal center of gravity is just in front of the leadout guide. With the engine in its forward position and the gear in its rearward position, the actual center of gravity is pretty much nominal. After moving the gear into its forward position, I found no measurable effect on the center of gravity. I would have liked a little less weight in the tail, but that's a consequence of the heavier, stronger fuselage. The wings are still a bit springy. I don't know if that makes them more or less likely to break. I just hope they don't flutter. The shoestring is ready for some test flights. Which will be the faster plane? 